On September 23, 2022, Hurricane Ian formed in the Caribbean Sea. After heading to the northwest across Cuba, Hurricane Ian turned east toward the southwest Florida coast. At 3.05 p.m. on September 28th, Hurricane Ian made landfall as a Category 5 storm at Captiva Island. The impact caused catastrophic damage to Fort Myers Beach, Sanibel Island, Captiva Island, Pine Island, Fort Myers, Cape Coral, and Punta Gorda. Hurricane Ian ranks as the fifth strongest storm to make landfall and ranks first with a loss of around $113 billion. Hurricane Ian packed up to 160 miles per hour winds and a storm surge of up to 15 feet. Unfortunately, 161 souls were lost. Over a year and a half has passed, and we feel confident that a visit will not cause interference in recovery efforts. Join us as we document these recovery efforts and document the damage. We are expecting a very hot day, so we start our journey just as the sun rises. What a treat this sunrise is. Muy bonito. But before we get to our destinations, we must first go through Cape Coral and Fort Myers. A quick fuel up and we're on our way. We crossed the Caloosahatchee River on the Cape Coral Bridge. This is the most southern bridge that connects the Cape with Fort Myers. Of note, both the Pine Island Causeway and the Sanibel Island Causeway were destroyed by Hurricane Ian. It took only three days to create a temporary causeway to Pine Island, but it took 15 days to do so for the Sanibel Island Causeway. 
The only way for emergency services to reach the island was by boat and helicopter. Keep in mind that travel across the island's roads would have been impossible due to the large amount of debris blocking entry and egress. As you can see, they are still working on the causeway today. Periwinkle Way is the main drag on the island. All the debris is long gone, but it doesn't take long for us to see damaged buildings. Check out the Dairy Queen on the right. We see many businesses that are still closed. Some may never reopen due to the financial loss. Southwest Florida thrives on tourism, and without it, coastal vacation hotspots suffer unbelievable financial difficulties. You may see palm trees with the tops twisted off. Sometimes the trees will survive and sometimes not. Deciduous trees fare much worse in hurricane force winds. This will cause a lot of damage with them. Crossing Blind Pass brings us to Captiva Island, the epicenter of landfall. Despite the extreme loss, it's nice to see locals out and about. As you can see, fishing is a huge pastime here in Florida.
From what I'm seeing, private homes have already been fixed up or they're under construction currently. However, we are seeing some empty lots along the way. That means it was a complete tear down of the structure. There are countless for sale signs as well. We ride by the town of Cattiva. Normally this place would be packed with people, but today it seems almost empty. There's no one at the shops either. Look at this, just a few golf carts. This place is normally packed. We are not quite to the top of Cattiva Island, but we're going to turn around. We'll have to backtrack on the same road as we head back toward the center of Sanibel Island, but we'll take a side road and go out to the west coast portion by along the beaches there until we get to the south end of Sanibel Island. Wow, how beautiful is this beach on Captiva Island here. The water is just this beautiful turquoise. Very pretty. I could see the allure of people living here despite the dangers. When we reach Rabbit Road, we turn west and that takes us out to the beach. We'll run along the beach on West Coast Drive for a while here until we get more to the uh, center of the causeway portion. From there, we'll go south down to the park. As you can see, there are empty lots here. I'm sure there were homes there at one point before the hurricane. There's no way these weren't uh, built on earlier. Now there's several that are just missing.
Unfortunately for us, the Sanibel Beach access was blocked off. I don't know if uh, things have been destroyed there and they're not open for the public yet or what was going on. But I'll respect the cones and we'll keep on going. This little shopping center looked like it might be open. There were quite a few cars here, so there are some services on the island that are starting to get back and running. The Lighthouse Beach Park is a beautiful little park, and it was open. You could get to the beach here easily. But look at this. Again, normally this would be jam-packed with people, and there's just a few cars here. Normally you'd struggle to find a parking space. As we head back to the mainland, it is quite clear that recovery efforts are well underway and a lot of places have been completely fixed up. However, things are not back to normal here, and there's a lot of businesses that were damaged heavily. It's a shame because this is really a neat area. I know my kids love Sanibel Island here, and we would go here sometimes just for dinner or lunch and have some fun at the beach. But Things are looking up, and uh, they'll eventually get back to where everything's good again. The Sanibel outlets and specialty shops used to be a hopping spot. It was not unusual to have to circle the parking lot to wait for someone to leave. It was always that busy. But today, I see the stores were completely destroyed. Chain link fencing blocks the entrances. What a shame. It was a favorite outing for my girls. You can look it up on the internet and still see how it used to be before the hurricane. We're going to stop here and take a short break and we'll continue on with our journey here to Fort Myers Beach in the next video. See you then.